Welcome to Norway, an Aviation Pro Fetsum Flight Summer Special. Today we'll be making a beautiful flight from Norway to Sweden with the Norwegian Boeing 737. And as always, I'd like to know a bit more about the destinations I fly to and from on the Fetsum network. And I think it's great to show you some great footage of this beautiful country. We'll be flying from Bergen Flesland Airport in Norway to Stockholm in Sweden. I never visited Sweden before, but I did visit Norway in 2013. As you can already see on the map, Bergen is surrounded by fjords, which will give us some great views during the departure. And indeed, these fjords are really awesome. You can do some great hiking, and as you get to the top, you can get some breathtaking views. But also down in the valley, the fjords really look amazing and majestic. And by the way, Bergen is a very nice place as well. A small little town with a great fish market and some great food. So let's go into the cockpit of the 737 and let's hope we can see some of the beautiful scenery in the sim despite the bad weather in Bergen. Because as you can see, it's pouring rain here and there's a lot of fog too. But it should make for an interesting departure. Now I never flew to or from either of these airports. So I will take you along as I fly this Vetsam flight on an unfamiliar but beautiful route. And by the way, if you ever get a chance to visit Norway or Sweden, uh, you know, as you can see from the footage, it looks awesome and it's a great country to visit with a lot of things to do and see. So I definitely recommend it. So guys, welcome to the Norwegian Boeing 737-800 cockpit. Um, as you can hear, I have a bit of a cold. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed the intro of just now and it's time to make our flight from Bergen to Stockholm. Uh, which I think will be very nice. Now as you can see, currently it's raining here in Bergen. Uh, same weather here in the Netherlands actually. There were some thunderstorms coming over just now. And the temperature was like 30 degrees. I don't know why I have a cold at this temperature, but yeah, it can happen. <laughs> um, uh, but now it should be cooling down a little bit. Uh, the weather here is uh, pretty similar, at least in terms of the rain. And um, yeah, there's quite a lot of... Uh, clouds out here and I saw some uh, fog on the matter as well so pretty interesting weather for uh, this flight uh, of course this region is quite well known for uh, having not altogether good weather and that mist and fog uh, occurs quite frequently so anyway let's uh, take a short look at our flight plan um, there's no AC yet I've not prepared the cockpit yet uh, so let's just go through the flight plan to see where we're going and what we're carrying with us and all that stuff so uh, as you can see, we're going to be uh, flying from uh, Bergen to Stockholm. Um, we're going to be taking 118 passengers, two children with us, um, with a takeoff weight of 64 tons, and our fuel is going to be six and a half tons, uh, good for almost three hours. Um, so we're going to be uh, flying for about an hour. The flight's not that long. As you can see on the chart here, the route is very straightforward. Uh, there's not much uh, trouble uh, there. Uh, we have some nice, or uh, should be expecting some nice tailwind along the route, so uh, this should be no problem. And if there's some significant weather, I did not see any significant weather on the radar. Uh, over Europe in this region, only some clouds. Uh, but for Stockholm, that should be no issue. Uh, anyways, uh, if we go back, uh, we can see that we're uh, Flying at uh, flight level uh, 350, and our route starts at Gokap and to Masef and ends up at Eltok. Uh, so we're going to fly the Gokap 1 Charlie departure and the Eltok 2 November arrival into Stockholm. Uh, yeah, so flight level 350, and uh, not much uh, to say about that. Uh, let's just quickly review the, the weather that came with the flight plan um, at uh, Bergen which was, uh, let's take a look, one hour ago. Uh, 140 degrees at seven knots, which means we're probably gonna use runway 17 for uh, departure. Visibility 6,000, light drizzle, scattered 300, broken 500, temperature 13, dew point 12. Yeah, so they're close to each other, so it's likely to get foggy. Uh, q and 1006, I'll uh, just set that in here. Please make sure that's correct. Uh, temporarily, uh, visibility is going to be 3,000 meters. Uh, light drizzle, mist, 
Uh, and Remark says that the wind at 1200 feet is 140 at 11, so the wind speed is going to increase a little bit when we uh, pass that altitude. Uh, other than that, um, not very uh, weird weather, just some uh, mist that we have to look out for, and uh, yeah, of course you have to be a bit careful in that case, especially when landing at uh, this airport. At our destination, Stockholm, uh, the wind is 250 degrees 4 knots, uh, variable between 170 and 320, CAF OK, so clouds and visibility are OK, temperature 1.8, 2.5, QNH 1006, and no significant change. Okay, so uh, yeah, pretty stable over there. The TAF doesn't say anything else either. Um, wind 280 degrees 7 knots, CAF OK, okay. Uh, becoming between uh, 16 and 18 Zulu, 110 at 10 knots. So the wind's going to be a bit variable, I think. And, uh, We'll see what word we will get uh, on the platform one, uh, one night right for the moment. <coughs> okay, so that's kind of the overview of the flight plan. I'm gonna prepare the cockpit now. Uh, HC should arrive in about 40 minutes and then uh, we'll uh, plan our departure time at uh, a quarter past eight local time. Uh, and let's see, it's, it's already in GMT, I think. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. So a quarter past uh, six. Uh, GMT time or Zulu. So um, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, some uh, HC is popping up, so uh, ATIS is online as well. So let's listen to the ATIS so we can uh, get to know the latest weather information and airport information. There we go. Zero. Expect ILS approach, runway and use 17, transition level 8. Five low visibility procedures in operation when one four zero degrees five knots visibility five thousand meters light drizzle mist broken three hundred feet temperature one three two point one three Q and H one zero zero six tempo visibility two thousand meters drizzle mist. Report information, Oscar. This is Bergen Fesslin. Information, Oscar. At time one seven two zero. Expect ILS approach. Runway in use one seven zero. Okay, so as you heard, um, low visibility procedures in operation, or yeah, low visibility operations uh, are active so um, yeah because uh, it's getting foggy out here and uh, there's a lot of rain you can see a lot of clouds is there as well so that uh, makes sense uh, runway 17 is active um, so yeah we do, no, there's no, uh, not any change to our SID or anything uh, we just have to pay attention to the bad weather to the fog especially along our routes as you can see on the navigation display our uh, route of the departure will take us al along some high terrain so it's important to have the terrain display on so we can know uh, where the high terrain is because we probably won't be able to see it um, even though it's daylight here. Uh, some light drizzle and uh, yeah the dew point uh, again is now the same as the temperature so it's likely that it will get more foggy uh, soon so we'll have to be a bit careful for that. Uh, anyways um, in a few moments we'll ask clearance, uh, approach should be in line in about 15 minutes and um, the aircraft is fully prepared right now and uh, should be almost good to go. So uh, let's wait a little bit more and then we'll ask our clearance with uh, tower. Tower is in line, um, approach uh, will be online, and then uh, in Sweden at least Stockholm center uh, will be online uh, as well as approach and tower as well uh, hopefully. So um, that should be a fun uh, flight and uh, again I'm, I'm unfamiliar with these airports I'm glad to be able to add them to my destinations because uh, I think it's a very nice region to fly and um, but uh, yeah bear with me if I make any mistakes along the route uh, of course exploring new airports always comes with some extra preparation and some extra care that you uh, have to put in so anyways uh, let's wait a little bit and we'll ask our uh, clearance for tower okay guys so uh, we should be ready to ask our clearance. Um, I'm very much looking forward to this departure with all the fjords and all that stuff. Um, I did not see any other traffic. I'm all by myself <laughs> currently. Uh, but that's probably because there's still some uh, HC that has to show up. So uh, 
no worries. But I think in uh, at least in Stockholm, it will be uh, there will be some other traffic, except me. So um, let's uh, we're tuned into tower one one nine or decimal one. We have information, Oscar, and we are at stand number two three. So let's ask for a clearance. And we are uh, North Shuttle seven one Golf, by the way. Uh, reality, I don't think there's currently any scheduled services by Norwegian uh, Air uh, Lines from uh, Bergen to uh, Stockholm, but uh, we can consider this a charter flight, right? <laughs> okay, there we go. Bergen uh, Tower, good evening, North Shuttle 71 Golf at stand 23 with information Oscar requesting clearance to Stockholm. Good evening, here to Stockholm, we are group at one Charlie departure, and this is line 4 Talks of 8, Squawk 2651. Clear to Stockholm via the GOCOP go 1 Charlie departure, and runway 17 initially climbed 4000 feet and Squawk 2651 for North Shuttle uh, 71 Golf. Northern 7 correct. Joint information is Oscar. Roger, we have information, Oscar. Thank you. Northern 7 go. Alright, so initially climb uh, to 4000 feet and we'll set our squawk code to 651 in the box. There we go. So now we have a clearance. Maybe it's a good idea to review our departure. Um, it's always a good habit, especially when you're uh, new to the airport. So, as you can see on the ground chart, we're at stand number 2-3. We're going to be pushing back to the right momentarily, and then uh, taxi to runway uh, 17, which is all the way there. Um, I'm not sure which taxiway we'll get, uh, Whiskey or Yankee. Uh, we'll take a look, but uh, it should be not too much trouble. I guess it will be Yankee. Uh, once we arrive at runway 17, uh, we're going to be flying the GOCOP 1 Charlie departure. Very straightforward. Uh, we're going to fly on runway heading 170 degrees. And uh, for 11.3 miles, then a left turn, 5.5 miles, and another left turn to Ekel, and then a uh, right turn again, uh, which will take us to GOCOP. And as you can see, we should have some great views uh, along the route here uh, of the fjords. Especially uh, as we're traveling towards the east, and uh, luckily it's a nice amount of daylight currently, so we should be able to see plenty uh, if the weather permits, though, because I'm not sure how how thick the fog layer is and if there it's going to be uh, cloud layers everywhere. Because if that's the case, then we won't be able to see that much. But <laughs> at least the idea is nice. So. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a uh, review over the departure. So we're uh, 4,000 feet initially, and uh, the rest should uh, go by itself. So um, I will just wait a little bit more to make sure that uh, Bergen approaches online, so that we have at least some ATC during our departure. Maybe we'll get a handoff to Stockholm Center uh, by uh, Bergen approach. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of a gap in between where we have to go to Unicom, but that's not a huge deal of course uh, but it, yeah so uh, we'll just shortly start our flight all right so uh, Bergen approach just came online so we can uh, start our flight now the earlier we go the better because uh, even though my departure official departure time is 15 minutes it at least makes sure that I arrive in time in uh, Stockholm for some ATC to uh, be uh, active there so the overhead panels all set uh, all fuel pumps on except the center uh, there we go, there we go. Well, engine at the ice, so we don't need it. Temperature is good enough. After the startup of the engines, um, all the leads are on. Uh, we'll turn the packs off for now and we'll turn on the anti collision light. And we'll ask for uh, startup and push with the uh, tower. Uh, just to make sure I already put in the approach frequency so that makes it easier when we are. Uh, uh, Texting to the runway and taking off. All right, um, yeah, everything should be shut. And, uh, pushback truck is ready. All we have to do is uh, release the. Uh, uh, let's see. Release the uh, wheel chocks, and then we should be good to go. Okay, there we go. 
And North Shuttle 7 1 Golf, uh, ready for pushback and start up. North Shuttle 7 1 Golf, push is now ready to pitch 1006. 1006 and start up and pushback approved, North Shuttle 7 1 Golf. Alright, so we have 1006 uh, set as the QNH, that's correct. And uh, we'll remove the wheel chunks, there we go. What I really like about the scenery is that you can actually see people walking down there in the terminal. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Okay. Gears are being locked. Well, let's turn on the local lights for fun if it gets dark. Of course, uh, we have a nice tail. Uh, <laughs> Norwegian airline always puts on uh, figures on their tails, which always looks great. I really like the liveries. Brakes released. Alright, let's start up the engines. There we go. Packs are off. And we gonna start engine number two. I feel so sorry for the marshaller today <laughs> in the rain. I'll add the fuel. Well, I won't be flying to Dubai tonight, <laughs> a bit far away. Start it out. Engine is stable. And we'll start number one. Set. And the starter gets cut out. Okay, very good. Ground to the generators of the engines. Turn the packs back on. Uh, everything seems to be set here. Engine start switch continuous. Uh, we'll turn the APU off. We don't need it anymore. There we go. We'll set flip swipe for departure. And uh, let's check our flight controls. So what I did is uh, put on the weather radar on the first officer's navigation display. So we have the weather there and the terrain display on uh, my side. Because uh, that's probably the most important uh, thing we have to look at this time. Uh, there we go. We have the auto throttle armed. Fly directors on both sides. And we should be good to go. 
push back the truck has been uh, removed. And uh, let's see. We're now uh, we've now pushed back on Mike. So we should be taxiing straight ahead, and then uh, probably onto Yankee at some point. Or we'll ask. <coughs> Alright, flaps are set at 5, trim is set, and uh, we should be ready for taxi. Let's go. And we're shuttle 71 involved, request taxi. We're shuttle 71 calls taxi, Golf Yankee, and Point Highway 17. Golf Yankee, uh, holding point runway 17, uh, we're shuttle 71 involved. All right, straight forward. Taxi lights are on, and the parking brakes are released. Straight ahead, Golf, and then onto Yankee. There we go. So we're not that heavy since we're not carrying that much fuel. Just kind of trying to clean up the levers of the side tech throttle a bit. <laughs> usually helps a little bit with uh, smoothing out the levers. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. So it's sad there's no Audi traffic up here. It's uh, feeling a bit lonely. Warm LNAV by the way. And we're gonna turn right here on Yankee. And the taxiway does indeed look very wet. Probably thanks to the texturing of this airport, but it does look very wet indeed. <coughs> so uh, I visited Bergen in real life. And uh, I think I drove by the airport as well, so I remember that well. That's a pretty cool sight. General Nora is just as you saw in the intro, a pretty beautiful country, so uh, it's great to visit. And uh, this is just a nice one of those small airports in the fjord areas. It's just beautiful to fly to, I think. I will uh, likely fly to this airport uh, in one of my own flights next time. Okay. Looking good so far. Go to the end of the runway. Temperature still 1.3. In the Netherlands it's definitely a lot more hot, so I'm kind of sweating in here. <laughs> but okay. Alright, for departure we have the landing lights, the strobe lights to go, and the TCAS on the TARE. And uh, the rest should speak for itself for this departure. So I hope you're all settled in. I'll be taking off shortly. Shuttle 71 Golf, winds uh, 140 at 5, runway 17, shuttle takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 17, North Shuttle 71 Golf. Okay, so wind is 140, we have a slight uh, crosswind from the left. Not that much. Turn on TCAS. Strobe lights to go. All right, there we go. It's lovely to be able to take off up between all these trees. <laughs> Looks quite nice. The approach frequency set up, and uh, runway is clear. Landing and strobe lights on.
Alright, there we go. On towards Stockholm. And stable. And take off. Press the set. 80 knots. E1, rotate. Pass rate, gear up. As you can see, I'm using ExoSky 16 nowadays, so I've got some special cloud effects. It's pretty nice. And gear is up. <coughs> uh, we can accelerate. Not sure if there's an alto handoff procedure, not that I'm aware of, but... No, it's not a little bit of 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 Bergen approach, good evening, North Shuttle 7, one Golf, go cop uh, one Charlie, passing 3700. North Shuttle 7, one Golf, uh, place one approach, good evening, identify, climb flap level 210, direct cool cop. Climb level 210 and direct go cop, uh, North Shuttle 7, one Golf. Alright. North Shuttle 7, one Golf, correction, climb flight level 170. Climb flight number 170, go, uh, North Shuttle 71 Golf. Okay, so that's a bit lower. And uh, back to level change. And we're going to make a left turn. Still flying manually. And we'll go to flaps up speeds. There we go. I uh, can't see that much, I'm afraid. <laughs> Flaps up. And we'll switch to VNAV. Going well so far. We've cleared the terrain for now. Some sun shining in the cockpit. is giving a message that there's no descent path after the waypoint. Not sure why, because I think there is actually, and otherwise we'll probably be able to fix it manually. It's only for the final portion of the arrival into Stockholm. Uh, but we'll see what happens there. There we go. Smooth departure so far, no winds at all actually. Which is logical because if you want to have uh, good amount of fog formation or mist then uh, <laughs> the wind has to be steady otherwise uh, there won't be any mist in the area usually and we'll switch to standard Q and H and I'll turn the autopilot on and we're picking up some tailwind so that's good gives us some time to enjoy the coffee no, and I'm afraid we're not going to see anything of the beautiful scenery of Norway. <laughs> Although I can kind of see a mountain up there. Uh, just through the clouds I saw it, but... 
Might be just a cloud as well. <laughs> yeah, passing ten thousand. Pressurization panel was all set. Looking good. And we'll put the gear to off. Alt brakes off. And we'll wait for further climb. And we accelerate. So climbing on nicely. Um, we're about 12 minutes away from the top of climb. Good. And our estimated time of arrival into Stockholm is 1916 Zulu. So, uh. About an hour away from now. And I think that should be within the time where at least uh, Stockholm Center is in line. So that's good. Ah, there we have some scenery. Just slightly through all of the clouds, you can see some of the mountains and the fjords. Looking good. Maybe on my first officer side, I can also. You can also send one for all of my identification until it's terminated. Unicorn wants to do that plane, so long. Have a great night. Want to do a decimal eight North Shuttle uh, seven one call. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <coughs> All right, so that's sad. We have to go to Unicom. At least for a small portion of the flight. There we go. Gives us a chance to go into the first officer seats. Check the views from there. Ah, oh yeah, we get some cool views here. <laughs> but also a lot of clouds, so uh, <laughs> not terribly much to see. Now we'll uh, further climb to uh, our cruise altitude, flight level 350. And I'll just check where we are right now on the map. So we can see what kind of ATC is available for us shortly. Yeah, as you can see, um, there's still a lot of uh, small airports online in Norway. No center controller and it will take us a while before we reach Sweden, Sweden airspace. And then uh, the rest of Europe, it looks pretty good as well. Amsterdam online, Germany is online, all that stuff. So, uh, of course, when I'm picking these airports, I always try to kind of uh, pick different airports when I can. Oh, look, this is quite beautiful. Look at that. Especially with the real rough terrain. I think you can see those clouds moving over there. Oh, no, there are shadows. Kind of look like those rolling clouds over the, uh, over the hills, <laughs> but they're just shadows. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I always try to pick uh, different airports when I can, and uh, I haven't featured the real Scandinavian region yet. Although I did visit Helsinki one time in an FS2004 video, but it was at night, so we could see that much. Um, and I'm glad it's summer now, now, so you can actually see something of the scenery, which is always very nice. Yeah, and as I told, I'm using uh, Active Sky 16 right now without Eska. Uh, I don't didn't think that that's really necessary. I kind of like it uh, out of the box already, and it already comes with some cloud effects as you saw uh, during departure. You really see those clouds hitting the flight deck like that. It's pretty cool, and uh, so far it's pretty cool. And uh, of course, I needed to switch because uh, if I want to have a free upgrade for the prepared version 4 version in the end then uh, I had to have Active Sky 16 so I thought well let's just upgrade now at least so we uh, so uh, you know get a free upgrade when it's ready and I'm not switching yet to prepared version 4 uh, the 737 is not available yet for uh, prepared version 4 I think it should be out in a couple of days but uh, I'm still waiting for some hardware like CP fly to be compatible and uh, yeah, but from what I saw, the general experience with prepared version 4 is pretty good. It's a good and stable simulator with uh, improved frame rates and of course 64 bits and a lot more smooth. So uh, that's very nice to hear. Not to say that this sim is not smooth though, because uh, as you can see it's pretty smooth as actually. It uh, looks pretty good, so uh, nothing to worry about there. And you can see the great cloud layers here, it's pretty beautiful. It looks just like what you can see on the weather radar over Europe. 
So, reaching our top of climb shortly, 4,000 feet to go, and uh, when we've reached our cruise altitude, uh, we'll review the approach into Stockholm already. Uh, because again, it's a new airport for me, and uh, there's some traffic in the area as well. I think there's around seven aircraft flying around that airport right now. There might be more heading that way. Uh, Gothenburg is also online, I think there's some kind of uh, controller rating controller practical test going on um, yeah but it should be okay um, and we'll also try to find out what the active runway is at uh, Stockholm so we can prepare that for the approach and uh, yeah it's a very nice airport as well to visit uh, nice Orbex scenery of course and uh, should be a pretty nice arrival and I uh, hope it's going to be daylight at least uh, a bit longer. Well, it's the longest day it was yesterday here in the Netherlands. I'm not sure how it is here up north, but it should be light most of the time here in summer, at least for the northern areas. Because uh, when you sleep, uh, you know, in Norway, the north of Norway, it just tends to get <laughs> not dark at all, you know. That's how it goes on the northern hemisphere like that. And, uh, I've also visited Iceland, that's, that's the same problem in summer where it's almost not getting dark, so sleeping is quite difficult. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's always something special to experience. And in the winter, of course, it's more dark than light, uh, which is uh, maybe a bit depressing at times. <laughs> Anyways, um, doing well so far. Aircraft's looking good, there's no weather, uh, or, or any significant weather on the weather radar on the uh, first officer side. And I've turned the terrain display off, and uh, the area around Stockholm should be uh, pretty flat, I believe, so there's not much trouble there. It should be okay. Got some nice series up here, that's pretty cool. Uh, you can see some of the fjords there in the distance. It's a pretty nice sight, with all the fog in between. It's very misty and mystic, mysterious. Yeah, when you when you would be using prepared version four, then this would look much sharper because then you would be able to see all the textures from a much larger distance. So it has no trouble loading all those textures into the me uh, virtual memory. But now, the only sh real sharp textures are really near you only. As you can see, it's not even that sharp when you zoom in. So, uh. anyways, it's something for the future. Part of a three five zero. So the eight is already in range. So uh, let's tune that in. 190. <coughs> See what we get from there. Not sure what happened there. Another eight is that it's going uh, crazy. <laughs> well, at least we uh, got that one room while I left us for the barge. I didn't get the Q and H. Transition level was six five. Let's put that in. in the forecast page. There we go, and then we'll uh, take a look at the arrivals for uh, Stockholm. And our uh, top of descent is in about 16 minutes, so we should have some plenty of time to uh, prepare our approach for runway 19 left. I thought it was runway 19 right at first, but uh, apparently it's 19 left, so no problem. Let's take a look. Alright, so apparently there's no real uh, RNF arrival for this uh, runway. So we just have the, the instrument star chart. Uh, I think that's the one they were using. So we arrive at Altok, then we uh, make a left turn, and then eventually intercept the uh, 29 degree, 29 or 5 degree radial inbound uh, the Arlanda VOR, I think. Yeah, off Romeo Lima, and then we arrive at our initial pro approach fix ball V. And I think we'll get factors from there, uh, so we can get to the approach. I'll just check if there's another chart for our ILS. A lot of charts in here. And uh, 
they don't actually have like names of the, the approach, which is a bit, a bit difficult. Uh, they all like have numbers and identifiers, but I don't know what they have by heart or anything, so I have to skip through all the charts to make sure the ones that I have are correct. Okay, so there's an instrument approach chart at least here of runway 19 left. So yeah, I think we'll get vectors from that point bell via the initial approach uh, fix. Um, and then from there we'll uh, join the ILS, which uh, starts at 2500 feet on a 185 degree course. Put that into the courses. 185. Um, just a standard three degree, three degree glide slope. Uh, we'll just fly category one approach, minimum to two seventy. Zero. There we go. And the Q and H was uh, one zero zero six. Barely see that. Yeah, that should be okay. Um. Let's see, in, in case of a missed approach, we climb straight ahead and at 600 or uh, USA DME 1.5 and uh, USA is just the ILS uh, 1111.35 um, Trevor is latest, turn left to track 149 and climb to 1500 and radar vectoring for a new approach Okay, so left turn and 149 for radar vectors Okay, so that should be okay uh, let's take a look at the arrivals. So we'll select ILS 19 left, and then the uh, as we saw on the charts. And now I have to find that chart again. Star instruments. Oh goodness. <laughs> oh, that's the one. Yeah. So the LTOC 6 Papa. <coughs> there we go. And as you can see, there's no transition available for this uh, standard terminal arrival route which means you'll get factors basically and if there's no ETC then you can factor yourself if you want to because you will not be able to follow any kind of RNF style approach which will just transition you from the start to the uh, initial approach fix or the, yeah, the ILS of the runway okay so we'll execute that uh, LTOC to Balvi and yeah, then we'll probably get vectors. We'll just uh, put this in, in here direct for the time being. Uh, then we'll go over to the init ref page uh, for our view or for our uh, final approach speeds. We'll select, select flaps 30 for the moment. And uh, I'll just check the weather one more time to take an exact look at the winds. It was 1009 there from the 80s. Okay. So we got a bit of a crosswind from the left. Nine or not, so a standard five knots correction should be okay. 111.35 again for the ILS. Uh, we'll put that in the nav radios. And this one. And then we should be good to go. So as you can see on the map, we're uh, almost entering the Sweden control airspace. Um, before we do, it's, it's also wise to look at the ground charts to see where we're going when we're taxiing out from runway 1A left when we land. That's also a good thing to prepare. Um, so I have no idea which tent we'll get, that's always exciting. <laughs> so as you can see, 1A left is pretty interesting. You will actually fly over one of the other runways, uh, which is not used, but 1A right is used for departures. So we'll fly over the other runway, one nine left, then just back it to the right. Via whiskey, we'll taxi to uh, the terminal. And this airport has kind of a similar layout as Amsterdam, with uh, one of the taxiways going clockwise and the other taxiway going anti-clockwise. So it should be pretty simple to taxi here. Uh, so as you can see, there's a special chart for uh, when you arrive uh, at this airport. So which taxi route you have to take when you arrive. So if we're, for example, going to Terminal 4, I'm just going to make a left turn, follow a uniform, and then uh, we'll enter Terminal 4 at some point uh, via Yankee. The Yankee 
and uniform are the uh, clockwise taxiways and then uh, Zulu and uh, whiskey are the anti-clockwise taxiways uh, clockwise taxiways so uh, yeah it should be pretty cool pretty interesting so the taxi route's not that difficult and we'll have some time when we vacate to find out where we have to go since we're uh, landing on runway one line left so uh, we have some time to taxi on whiskey and figure out uh, where our stat will be <coughs> so I did not look up which terminal Norwegian air shuttle was normally uh, positioned uh, that might be handy to do if you really have no idea where to go at a big airport like this uh, so we at least kind of have an idea which terminal you have at least but uh, currently I have no idea <laughs> but I can at least kind of look at the numbers to see where we, where which number is so I can kind of anticipate okay 60s and the 40s, terminal 4, 2, and then the 6, uh, well the 10s and the 1 number digits are pier A and B, and then pier F starts with Foxtrot and Golf, uh, with Golf, so yeah, you can kind of already anticipate where you kind of have to taxi, even if you don't know the exact stance from the number. Alright, there we go, 1184. To Sweden Control. My voice is getting worse, I'm sorry about that, but I can't help it really. Sweden Control, good evening, North Shuttle 71 Golf, flight level 350, uh, inbound to Massif. Hello, North Shuttle 71 Golf, Sweden Control, New Scope 7036. Squawk 7036, North Shuttle 71 Golf. 7036, which he will use to identify us. Top of descent coming up in 40 miles. Zoom in a little so I can see the screen a bit better. North Shuttle 71 Golf, Sweden Control, and flight maintain flight of 356. Maintain flight level 350, North Shuttle 71 Golf. <coughs> okay, so we'll set all to bring one. I think the runway is pretty short. Let's see, two and a half kilom kilometers, so yeah. It's relatively short, but all to bring one should do, I think. Uh, I think it should allow us to evacuate at Whiskey 4. Uh, because it doesn't really make sense to vacate at Whiskey 3 or Whiskey 6, of course. You would have to make some weird turn, I'm not sure if, the, if it's even allowed to do so. So it's better just to go to the end of the runway. So uh, Whiskey 4, Whiskey 3 should be fine. And then we'll go from there. Uh, so currently, in terms of A to C, we have uh, Sweden Control. Uh, approach is still online. I don't see tower anymore, so... Uh, that's rather unfortunate. So I hope at least this controller will stay aligned since he has uh, top-down control over the area. So one thing I uh, heard from a real-world 737 pilot is that you can subtract the amount of fuel from the gross weight in the uh, uh, approach reference page for your weight. So as you can see, our fuel at Stockholm is 3.6 and our current quantity is 4.1, so by the time we arrive, our gross weight will be 0.5 lighter. So you can subtract 0.5, if I'm doing this correct, I'm not sure, uh, from here, which will uh, make 61.6. And that should give some new speeds for some of the uh, uh, flap settings. In this case, it doesn't matter, it already changed, but uh, in that way, uh, you can already kind of anticipate what your weight will be. Once you, once you arrive and it will likely result in a lower VREF speed. So in this case the VREF is 144, we'll just apply a standard wind correction of plus 5, giving us a final approach speed of uh, 149 knots. Uh, transition level 65, it's already entered in the FMC. Runway uh, 19 left and the uh, star is the uh, LTOX 6, what was it, November? Better have the chart open before I lose it again. <laughs> Oh, there will be the LTOX 6 uh, Papa arrival. <coughs> okay, so that should be okay. So we should be set up for the approach. We know what we have to do. So uh, yeah, we're ready uh, 
to descend shortly. About two minutes to go. Uh, probably will ask for descent clearance shortly. North Shuttle 7 1 Golf requesting descent. North Shuttle 7 1 Golf, descent Shuttle 110, Kilo Ronda, Eltok 6, Papa, El Shalivan, 9 Descent flight of a 110 and clear the Eltok uh, 6, Papa arrival. North Shuttle 7 1 Golf. Not sure what he said at the end there, it broke up, but uh, I guess it's alright. I think he said it's when we want to left, but we know that already. And we started the sand flat on 110. There we go. Weather seems to be clearing up. Still the overcast clouds here and there, but uh, other than that, it should be okay. Uh, the next frequency is 12665 for approach. Indeed, towers of line, so I guess we'll have to finish with these two controllers. Which is fine. No big deal. So, indeed, we'll fly the LTOC 6 Papa arrival. Uh, yeah, should not be uh, too difficult. Let's see. If there are any restrictions here? I don't think so. Only if we uh, have to hold. Uh, which we don't. And Balvi is, uh, as you can see, at 11.3 uh, dB from the Arlanda VOR. So I'll just remember the uh, approach start uh, <laughs> is 4-63, is for the star, and then for the ILS, uh, over on the way 19 left, it's 5-4. Okay. Okay. Uh, on the uh, ILS chart, you can see that the uh, on the note that there is a minimum of 160 knots until 4 dME, uh, which is quite standard for uh, other airports, uh, as you know. And there's a note that simultaneous approaches on runway 19 left or 19 right may be executed. Uh, it's not the case right now because 19 right is used for departures. Um, the minimums are already set for this approach. And uh, yeah, looking pretty good. So I'm curious to see what the scenery looks like here because uh, I heard some good stories of arrivals into Stockholm. So, uh, so far it looks pretty good. Some nice lakes of course. So the latest weather at Stockholm, uh, 100 degrees at 8 knots. Wind variable between uh, 080 and 170. Cav okay, temperature 14, dew point 6. Q&A is 1006, no significant change is expected, so pretty cool. And we still have a nice tailwind, as you can see, <coughs> which made this flight pretty short. We're still on track, so that's good. I always find it hard to descend to 737. It's, uh, it's kind of a hard one uh, to get down at times, but okay. And we're still enjoying some nice daylight, so that's pretty cool. Some white fluffy clouds today. Uh, we're still going to need some drag, as you can see. So we'll get some speed brakes running. Contact Stockholm Control 126.650. Contact Stockholm Control 126.650. North Shuttle 71 Golf. Bye bye. Bye. 126.65. There we go. Final frequency for today, probably. Stockholm Control. Where are we inbound to Argip? Stockholm Control, good evening, North Shadow uh, 71 Golf, passing flight level 190 for flight level 110. North Shadow 71 Golf, Stockholm Control, radar contact, information to get valid, flight direct to Balibi. Direct to Balvi, uh, North Shuttle 71 Golf. There we go. Well, that's still straight ahead, as you can see. We'll add some more drag. <coughs> so we can lose a bit of speed. And we're gonna surely enter the clouds. Pretty cool. And uh, I expect radar vectors after Balvi. I think. 
You can already hear some aircraft being vectored, so that's a pretty good sign. <laughs> Sorry if I'm coughing, I <laughs> can't help it, unfortunately. Not sure if I would have been going out for flying under these conditions in real life. But uh, <laughs> so if you have a cold, it's pretty nasty when you have to deal with uh, pressurized cabin systems and all that stuff. But alright, this is just simulation. <laughs> and it's still very hot here, despite the thunderstorm that came by today. So uh, I'm glad if I arrived and I can put on some uh, normal clothing. <laughs> Look at these clouds, aren't they beautiful? Very fluffy today. <laughs> Thanks to the soft clouds of uh, Rex. I heard there's another uh, Rex product coming soon. Uh, Seven one gold. Try heading zero nine or zero, starting vectors for the LS one and the left. And you have approximately sixty track miles to go. Heading zero nine zero vectors for LS one and left. Uh, thank you, uh, North Shuttle Seven One Golf. All right, left heading zero nine zero. Go. Let's try to get the speed a bit under control. So as I said, real environment extreme will release another product soon. Called Sky Force 3D, which should make those clouds look totally different and even better. Especially thunderstorm clouds, which really have these big, big structures that you really cannot really simulate right now with these individual cloud textures. Still, this looks pretty good to me, but apparently it can be made even better, which is very nice. So, of course, they are the most important obstacles in the sky to uh, see. So, uh, yeah, I uh, look forward to uh, to that product. Nonetheless, these clouds look great as well, especially in combination with uh, Active Sky 16. All right, doing good so far. Just kind of check with the VNAV page what kind of speed we can expect. And uh, we're still 110, clear to 110, so uh, we get further descent. So I've switched to level change, which is always a bit more convenient uh, when being vectored. It allows you to just, you know, in steps go down at a certain speed. And we'll just wait for further descent right now. Getting a little bit of bumps up here. Not that much, so far this flight has been very smooth. Last week I had a couple of flights and thunderstorms in the Netherlands, which was crazy. A lot of turbulence. <laughs> Even though you try to avoid... Rocket 71 Golf. D-17, flight 70 and turn left, heading 080. Descent flight level 70 and left heading 080, North Shuttle 71 Golf. Now we'll uh, set speed to 250. 250 knots below 10,000. Landing lights on. Just gonna add a bit more drag so we can get to 250 knots a bit quicker. So yeah, this uh, weather is pretty smooth, but last week it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, and even, even though you're trying to avoid the thunderstorms, it's impossible to avoid everything at some point. Just trying to kind of fly in the lightest weather as possible, but uh, still, it's pretty difficult. So we still got some tailwind, that's why it's wise to uh, make good use of the speed brakes because uh, it's quite difficult to descend at times such as now and to keep the speed at this level when you have a lot of headwind it tends to be a bit easier in this airplane but uh, with tailwind it's quite difficult but we should be good to go Shuttle 71 Golf, descent altitude 5000 feet, QNH 1006. Descent 5000 feet, QNH 1006, North Shuttle 71 Golf. Alright, let me add some drag here. You know, I always kind of keep an eye on the VNAV because I know what kind of the altitude should be. See, it already says that this flight path is unachievable. So you can just kind of play around to see what your altitude kind of should be. Because when you're vectored, you never know, really know if you're on, on the proper descent path. But in this way, 
you kind of can fix that. Kind of cheating to see what the uh, altitude should be. As you can see, we're pretty high still, despite having almost full speed brakes. There we go, full speed brakes deployed. And we'll uh, descend to 2500. And the transition level was 065, so we'll shortly switch to local QNH of 1006. There's another airport up here. Let's see Echo Shera Charlie Mike, I think. Yep. Nice. And uh, let's see if we can see Stockholm already. Looks like we can't. There's some uh, foggy weather out there. Clouds look really nice though. Love this yellow gloomy look over there. It's pretty beautiful. We're shot to 71 knots, descent to 2500 feet. And uh, high speed approved if you need it. Roger, high speed approved and. Uh, at 2,500 feet for North Shuttle 711. Well, yeah, we need it <laughs> at this point because uh, even with full speed brakes, it's going to be pretty tight. Of course, you can also use this green indicator, of course. There we go, local QNH to see where you'll end up at 2500 feet and as you can see we'll end up there just before we're going to join the ILS and uh, Foxwood India which is the final approach fix 19 left is the point where we're going to descend so at that point you actually already want to be at 160 so uh, it's going to be quite difficult to uh, slow this airplane down we'll see how it goes Shortly, uh, just apply flaps one to create even more drag. Now I can see the airport over there, looking good. <coughs> and we're kind of catching up, as you can see. And there's no traffic behind us, as far as I'm aware of. Let's just first descend to 2500 and from there on we'll uh, start to slow down the airplane. Back to 160 knots until 4 dB. <coughs> we'll just make sure the ground charts are ready. Oh, let's enjoy these beautiful views. Wow, look at that. Nice evening in Stockholm. There we go, 2500. Watch out to the 7 1 left, turn right heading 160, clear left approach, 1 9 right. And left, of course. Yeah, clear, uh, right heading 160, clear the ILS approach, runway 1 9 left, north shuttle 17 go. 7 1 go, sorry. Okay, there we go. So left turn. Right turn, sorry. I'm going to set flaps 1 and uh, speed back to 160. I'm going to have to uh, lose quite a bit of speed right now. I'll arm the approach mode. Localizer gets captured. Alright, so I'm gonna put speed brakes down again. Speed brakes are armed. Set the engine start switch to continuous. And this is all looking good so far. Set running runway heading 184. And glide slope is coming up. Flips 5. And we can already see the runway very nice there in the distance. <coughs> Alright, I'll put the gear down already. And 
I have my pen at already and a paper to write down the taxi route and the stand. Uh, let's do flips 15 immediately. Oh, that's 25, there we go. And we're uh, 6.7 DME. There we go. And we got some crossing from the left, so we'll be uh, interesting landing. Roger, the 701 Golf Jet Land. One on the left, winds 100 degrees, 7 knots. Clear to land, runway 19 left, North Shuttle uh, 71 Golf. Alright, there we go. Looking good so far. Shortly we'll reduce to our uh, final approach speed. Look at this view. Pretty nice, isn't it? Nice forests and trees around the airport. Alright, so let's reduce final approach speed to uh, 149er and we'll set the flaps sturdy. Alright, so speed brake arm letting you down and start switch continuous. And we'll uh, continue manually from here. Auto throttle, autopilot disconnected. Bit of wind, not that much. It's a crosswind from a 90 degree an angle, that's quite interesting. Foxtrot 6, taxi on in point uh, 1 minor at 15 intersection, Yankee 9 Tango 1 minor right Landing? Back to 1 Foxtrot 100 50 30 20 10 Ah, I'm floating Oh, it's laggy Wow, what's happening? It never happened seen that before. I think it's time to switch to prepared version 4. <laughs> Alright, 60 knots, uh, manual break. And we'll fack it right here. There we go. Welcome to Stockholm. There we go. Turn right here. Alright, so that's a pretty weird landing with the lag at the end. I'm not sure why that was happening. It's probably because it was preloading the it was loading the sounds of the GPWS system. Which should be no issue when uh, they're 64 bits because. Oh, shut up. Uh, yeah. Anyone on the taxi to stand one four. We are north, whiskey left, Sudo. Taxi stands one four via whiskey and the north, uh, North Shuttle 71 Golf. Okay, stand one four, straight ahead, whiskey, and then. Uh, 
Via Zulu. So yeah, via the north, you hear also hear that in Amsterdam. Just me in the north of the airport. So in this case, we'll taxi via Whiskey and Zulu to stand 1-4. So yeah, as I was telling, with 64 bits you can just load all those sounds in the memory already and that, that way you don't have to wait for the hard disk to uh, come up with those sounds and I think that was what was happening during uh, <laughs> just during the flare. But I was also floating quite a bit, which was unfortunate, but uh, unfortunately I didn't uh, get to fly the sim much lately, but uh, it's always still a challenge to land the airplane right in the touchdown zone and make a firm landing. Anyway, I don't think the passengers will complain that much. So yeah, I, at least the approach was beautiful, I think. And um, yeah, we'll get to uh, we, we got to get some uh, very beautiful views there in the end. I think. I'm glad to have eight C all the way through. So we're on whiskey here. Turn left heading zero, seven, so you should be able to just go straight uh, ahead. They should actually fly direct, Baba. Uh, there we go. We're crossing a bridge there, I think. Yeah, or it seems like. Yeah, I'm surprised by how this airport is quite similar in structure and uh, as a uh, skipple. <laughs> also, taxiways going over uh, roads, as it seems. I'll take one hook to six. I can give you one better. You can try that near jet. Oh, there we go. I think it's just a heavy scenery as well, just loading a lot of stuff. But that's okay. So, in the meantime, we'll start the APU already. I'm kind of using a constant engine thrust if I can. That's more economical uh, for uh, fuel burn and also for the life of the engines. If you try to use a constant thrust setting instead of you know pushing up and pulling back the power all the time, it's not as efficient as just having one static setting. Uh, but now we have to turn left here onto Zulu. And this is also indicated on the charts, the direction which you have to taxi. So it's not that difficult. Alright, Zulu Papa. And just after the next turn, uh, we should have our entry points. There's an, uh, another Scandinavian Boeing 737, as you can see. and then we'll take the next one and already select uh, oh, I'm not sure which gate it is B yeah whatever but see that also takes time to load <laughs> Unfortunately, I hope it works. Seems to have a difficult time. Oh, there we go. Uh, it seems to be the correct stand at least. APU is running. Let the APU generator take over. There we go. I will turn the taxi lights off. There we go, stands for uh, 1 4. Looking good.
the left. Still need to add some more power. And we'll set the parking brake. Pew's taken over, a pew bleed on. Turn one of the packs off. And we'll disconnect the fuel. There we go. Here we go guys, we're at uh, Stockholm. I hope you enjoyed this uh, beautiful flight uh, from Bergen. I definitely enjoyed it, I definitely enjoyed the views and the, the sights of uh, Norway and uh, Stockholm as we arrived. So uh, I hope you did too. I didn't like the landing too much, uh, if, that's, if I have to say so myself. But uh, that was mainly due to the lag during the final stage of the landing, which has been unfortunate. Uh, that's why I sometimes prefer to fly at you know, smaller airports with not too heavy scenery, so at least you don't have to worry too much about kind of this laggy stuff during uh, approach. Uh, let me log off with the controller. And watch it all. Uh, 71 Golf is on the blocks. Uh, thank you very much for this service. Bye bye. Hello, Mr. Hello. All right, let's go after frequency. So yeah, there we go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tell me uh, what you uh, think of this flight. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. Your uh, comments and suggestions and questions are always very much appreciated and I will answer all of them. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions for future destinations, for example, or uh, you know maybe an aircraft that I should fly, feel free to uh, leave it below. Um, also make sure to check out my Patreon page again, uh, you know, uh, it helps me a lot, uh, your support. Uh, so head over to patreon.com slash aviationpro to find out how you can support the channel. Uh, your help is always much appreciated. And for other ways of supporting the channel, check down in the description. There are many other opportunities uh, which really help me to continue making these videos. Um, what should be coming up shortly? Well, a few RDM tutorials coming up uh, at least. Uh, maybe followed by an NDB tutorial uh, and of course since it's summer I'm free uh, there will probably be more vets and flights maybe some videos about interesting approaches things like that uh, and of course also the switch to prepared version 4 is something to think about so uh, you can follow me on that path and uh, kind of see how I'm going with the switch and I'm really looking forward to using that sim because I definitely think it's the future and uh, it will help a lot to solve problems like we see saw on the landing here um, so um, anyway, so I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Make sure to check out my Facebook and Twitter. Um, you can visit the links in the description as well. And check out my website aviationpro.nl for more information. I will see you on the next one. And until then, I will uh, wish you a good day and uh, many happy flights. See you.